with another um, Where Are You Dipper reading by Dips and Mabes 167. Um, I'm really enjoying this, actually. I, I just can't wait to get started, so let's just shut up and get right started. Okay. <clears throat> so. We're still in Mabel's POV. I didn't get to finish it up, but... Okay. <clears throat> she put the food on a tray, and we started walking. Now, we, ha we have to find Stan and Wendy started. Uh... It looks like they're over there, I said, pointing to the corner of the cafeteria where Seuss was standing on his chair, waving his arms, <laughs> trying to get our attention. Seuss, get down, you'll fall and break everything, I heard Stan yell. Just as he said it, Seuss fell off his chair and, chair and into the floor. Ow! We heard him yell. Everyone turned... <laughs> Everyone turned their attention to him with weird looks on their faces. Wendy, Wendy and I ran up. Ran up. S -s -s Seuss, we yelled. Wendy sat, set the tray down and helped me stand him back up. Oh, 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 dudes, that hurt. That hurt bad, he said. We sighed in relief knowing that he was okay. Ugh, headache, he said, he said as he sat down. When Wendy sat down beside him. I sat down on the other side of Grunkle Stan. Wendy cut the sandwich in half and gave it to me. Th thanks, I said. We proceeded to eat our food in silence. We were all lost in our own thoughts. That's when I remembered I had to make a decision. Do I let him live in, live his life in pain? Or end it and live mine in misery? I mentally sighed and thought some more. What if he's not in any pain at all right now? What if he can't feel anything? Then I would be ending his life for nothing. But, but what if he's in a lot of pain? Then he'd be spending every second of every day in a living nightmare. I continue to think about the subject. If I, kept, if I keep him alive until next week, he can get more blood. But what if it's not enough? And even and and even if he gets the blood, he he still might not wake up. What if he's in a coma for a year? He'll he'll be living in pain for a year. But what if he what if he wakes up in 3 days? Then he can say what's hurting him, and they can help. But what if he? Can, what if they can't help him though? I started to get a headache. I finished the half of my sandwich and drank my orange juice. There were so many, many what ifs involved in making a decision. That's exactly why I never do it. There's, I knew there was no getting out of it, so I thought about it some more. About five minutes later, I had a solution. I cleared my throat. They all looked at me. <clears throat> I, I, I made my decision. And what are we going to do? Stan asked. I started my sentence. I, I think we should. That's when the doctor came in, running to the cafeteria, yelling for us. We all ran to the doctor, and I asked, What, what's happening? I've got bad news. He said, and you'll never believe what he said next. Okay, on to chapter 13. We still got 10 minutes. <clears throat> Doctor's POV. I've got, I've got some bad news, I yelled as I ran up to them. What is it? They asked. I put my hands on my knees and started to take deep breaths. I ran from the 8th floor as soon as I got the news from one of the nurses. I ran through the lobby, waiting room, the, and ER before I ran into the cafeteria and found them. Come on, dude, breathe, Seuss said. Dipper, he's got eternal bleeding, losing blood. Ow, cramp, cramp. 
I said through my heavy breathing as I grabbed my side. What? They all shouted and ran. I, I sighed and ran after them. Wait! But they were already in the elevator. By the time the eleva elevator doors started to close, I was still about ten feet away. Hold the doors! I yelled, but they were too engaged in their own worries, worried shouts that they couldn't hear me. I grumbled and turned left, which led me to the staircase. I stopped by the time I got to the second floor to catch my breath. I heard the elevator doors ding from upstairs, and I knew it was them. Lord, give me strength, I mumbled as I continued. You are currently alone in the conference. Please wait. Sorry, guys, that, that was nothing. When I got there, I saw that the family had already went into the room. Jesus Christ! I muttered as as I heard yelling. Where, where's my great nephew? I heard the old one yell. I finally gave up running and walked down the hall. I, I don't, I don't know, sir. I just came to change the sheets on this bed. I heard the nurse say nervously. I walked into the room just in time to hear the pines gasp. Are you, are, are you saying that he's not coming back? The redhead asked as tears threatened to pour out my eyes. The nurse's wide, widened and softly set and softly smiled. No, 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 no. It's not like that. The young boy in here just went into surgery about 30 minutes ago. I decided to change the bed sheets into clean, the new one, so he's more comfortable. I saw the youngest girl sigh in relief. I cleared my throat. All of them turned around, their attention toward me. As you all know, Mason's cut. The little girl cut me off. Uh, can you call him Dipper? I looked at her, expecting her to burst into laughter at any moment and tell me that she was just kidding. But she didn't, so I continued. Um, Dipper's condition when he first came here was pretty bad. He had a dangerously amount of blood. Luckily, we just inserted enough blood to keep him going. After all this, after the surgeries on his ankle and arm, we noticed that he wasn't able to breathe on his own. At first, we shook it off as nothing because we were worried that he, maybe he was just weak from the surgeries. Then, after a while, I started to get worried, so we ran some tests and figured out that he had eternal bleeding in his head, which is why he's so weak, in a coma, and can't breathe on his own. <gasps> okay, but what are you trying to say? The old guy asked. I sighed and said, if you guys don't if you guys don't want to want us to pull his plugs he might d depending on how the surgery goes pull through until next week however even if he does i cannot guarantee that he will wake up they all sat in shock the surgery will take about 3 more hours if everything goes according to plan dipper should be wheeled back here around 6 p.m. okay y yeah yeah, yeah. Come on, people. Stan grumbled. We all walked down the hall, into the elevator, and sat in the same chairs we sat in when we first brought Dipper in. That's when I saw those nurses that Wendy, Seuss, and Stan claimed they they didn't see. I turned my attention to the TV when I heard Wendy gasp. Town sweetheart Lil Gideon was found dead in his parents' ba basement. Police say he had a knife stuck in his back, which w which which is what eventually killed him. Officials say that the only thing they have for ev of evidence was a spot splotch of blood that was O positive, the complete opposite of Lil Gideon's blood, which type is O negative. After looking through medical records for his, for her his parents. They have concluded that his parents have O positive blood too. They begin investigating the murder of Gideon right now. I'm S I'm Sandra Jimnies reporting live from Gravity Falls Jail, where the two are being investigated. Stay with us and say and and stay up to date on the latest. We all stared at the TV. Well, 
this is, uh, this is, wow, Sue said. We sat in silence. Are you guys worried? Wendy asked. No, the cops are probably literally the dumbest people on the planet. They probably just, they're, they'll probably just charge the parents, Stan said. Well, what about you, Mabel? I shrugged. I don't know. I hope they don't charge anyone because they didn't do it. I don't know. I just feel really bad about the whole thing. I'm sure nothing will happen, dudes. Seuss reassured me. I smiled at him. And he yawned. Hey, how about we take a nap? Then we'll find out what happens. You with me, dudes? He said, looking back and forth between Wendy and Stan. As if on cue, they both yawned. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a nap. We all deserve one. We, m we murmured in agreement and eventually fell asleep. Well, I'm going to wrap up. I'm going to do um, the three hours later thing. Okay. <laughs> we all woke up to the doctor clearing his throat. Wendy and Stan and I jolted awake, but Seuss didn't. The doctor was about to speak when Seuss let out a loud sno snore. Seuss! Wendy hissed while elbowing him in the stomach. W w what What's happening? He asked drowsily. Um, anyway, the doctor started. I wanted to inform you that the surgery was successful and Dipper's back in his room. We all stood up. Think, thanks, man, Sa Wendy said as we passed the do doctor to the elevator. We clicked the button. I let Seuss click it this time when the doctor came after us. Wait, I, st I still need an answer on what you're going to do. I hesitated, but we all walked towards the door. Are you going to pl pull his plugs or not? The doctor said, looking at Stan. He looked down to me. M Mabel, did, did you come come to a decision yet? He asked. You, you, you let, you let the girl decide? She's only 12 years old, the doctor exclaimed. She's the closest in relation to him, so she knows what's best for him, Stan explained. I sighed and said, we, we. We need to pull his plugs, I said quietly. They gasped as if they weren't expecting me to say it. Oh, okay, the doctor said, writing something down on the clipboard. He stuffed it back in his coat. Let, let's, let, let's go, let's go over with then. Let's go over this with then. He started walking to the elevator. We followed him and I could hear Wendy and Sue starting to cry. Tears flooded my eyes as the elevator door closed. Is it... Is it... Is it okay if we have a little time to... Uh... You know... Say our goodbyes? Stan said. That'll... that That will be fine. The doctor said. Stan nodded his head in understanding, then looked down. I saw a cup of tears fall out of his eyes, so I grabbed his hand. He looked at me and opened his mouth to say something, but he closed it and looked back down at the ground. I also looked, but I'm sure everyone in the elevator was looking down with tears in their eyes, other than the doctor. The elevator stopped. The door stepped off first, followed by Wendy, Seuss, and Stan, and I. We stopped at the front of Dipper's door. I hate to rest you. I hate to rest you. But I have to remove the child's tonsils in about 25 minutes, the doctor said. That's fine. We'll each stay in there about five minutes. Will that be okay? I knew that that would be pushing it, but the doctor agreed. That's fine. In the meantime, I can go and check on some patients. I'll be back here in 20 minutes. We nodded as if to say okay. C c can I go in first? Seuss asked us. We all nodded our heads and watched as he walked in. As soon as he went in, we sat down on the provided bench by his door and decided that Wendy would go in next, Grunkle Stan, and finally me. Well, you guys, that's it. I really got to cut it short because I'm running out of time. Okay, bye. <laughs>